Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, gentlemen. Thank I want to thank you and your staff for all of your good work. Uh, my question deals with uh, enhanced 911 service, and I know that Pima has oversight along with uh, working with our, our counties uh, to provide enhanced 911 service. And when you look at the fees that are collected, um, when you look at the landlines, those are co collected in the counties and stay in the counties. My question deals with uh, our wireless 911 service and the, the fees that are, are collected um, for wireless 911. Mr. Director, can you give us a status of the, the uh, wireless 911 system, uh, some more information on how much revenue is collected, um, a look at uh, specifically how that's distributed back to the counties? Yes. Uh, overall, if you remember when 911 began, we started with a uh, fee on hard wire line telephone lines, and uh, that money goes directly to the counties. Later on, uh, there was another act that was passed to put a dollar fee on wireless uh, cellular telephones. Uh, that money comes into the state and then is distributed out to the counties. Uh, what we are experiencing is that the wire line revenues have decreased markedly into the counties. It's been replaced with people using cell phones in their homes rather than having <coughs> hardwired phones in their houses. We experienced many years of growth in wireless revenues, but in the last few years, the amount of growth has decreased. The percentage of increase is decreasing each year. And what's happened then is that people have begun to use different types of devices for communications. The first that we address were voice over IP telephones, so that when Verizon or Comcast says to you, here's your triple play, your internet, your TV, and your phone, that's an IP-based telephone. And we get a dollar off of each of those phones. That's part of what impacted uh, the wireline revenues directly. Uh, and then there was an area of uh, uh, prepaid cell phones that people began using those, and there was some revenue from those. But adding all that up, we continue to see a decreasing pot of money to support 911. When that happens, uh, the counties are required then to make up the difference of those budgets. So today, uh, we receive about $111 million a year from wireless funds, and wireline funds are down to $81 million a year. There is still about $80.24 million of costs that are not covered by those state funds. And those costs are made up by county governments. So the system we have today is that about 72% of the costs are covered by state funds and 28% are covered by county funds. And since we began the program in 1990, the costs for operating those centers continue to increase wage increases, utility cost increases, tariffs charged by the phone companies, those have all gone up. The fee that was originally created, if you look at the dollar fee, that's worth 66 cents today based on the inflation. So we're not generating any you know, in, increase in revenue based on that inflation. So we're faced with a very serious problem and, and, and one of the other major issues is the way the law was enacted is the counties ask us for money for their operation and we have to provide it, whether we have it or not. So what happens is we don't have enough money in a given year to answer all those re requests. It becomes an IOU. The money comes off the top of the following year. I never heard of a system where you can ask and get anything you want. Uh, and, and people who have been uh, honest enough to tell us is that the way the law is written is they ask for a Cadillac and then they go buy a Ford and then they use the extra money to support those other costs. So we are, we are fast approaching a crisis situation in our 911. If you remember, the way it was set up was there were two phases to developing e enhanced 911 in Pennsylvania. The first one was that we could identify the caller uh, and the address. The second one was the caller and the location. 
which required a latitude and longitude. That's tier two. We are 100% tier two built out in Pennsylvania. And those funds were to build out the 911 system, yet we're still spending $272 million a year and we're not building out the system anymore. So we are, we are facing this situation where we're not getting enough money in to cover the costs. The costs continue to go up. If we look at that in terms of just bills we pay at home, if the bills go up, we have to increase our revenue source or we have to lower our expenses, one or the other. We have an opportunity now uh, because many of the uh, telephone switches that are in our 911 centers are coming to what is their end of life. You can't use them and they have to be replaced. That's very expensive. Uh, you know that we call these places where the calls come PSAPs, public safety answering points. And we've got 69 of those in Pennsylvania. Those 69 PSAPs are designed to cover 10,000 911 operator positions. We have less than 900 in the whole Commonwealth. We have overbuilt a system that is antiquated and expensive. Now the good news is that in the last 10 years technology has zoomed forward. And we can now take advantage of that and provide with your help, provide 911 services differently that will allow us to lower costs not require the legislature to raise the fee and to reduce those expenses of our county commissioners and those county governments by, by applying new technology. Uh, now, there have been, uh, there was a, an Auditor General's report done in 2008 that made a number of recommendations that have not been implemented. They were there when we arrived and we're in the process of trying to implement those now. But additionally, uh, we have the opportunity through something called next generation 911 to look holistically at what's been happening around Pennsylvania and create a system that rather, let's take 13 counties in southwest Pennsylvania, rather than replacing 13 old traditional kind of switches there, we can put four new type switches in there and do the same job. The great thing about that is that it allows counties then to make the decision if they would like to consolidate their 911 centers. It's not us saying you, we think you should, it's saying technology will let you do that and that will lower your costs. It will make the system more efficient. So I know that's a big answer for what you asked, but uh, summing it up, we are rapidly approaching a crisis situation. I think we were $13 million short of request this year. Next year we'll be $38 million short of request. It just gets worse every year. And so there is a legislative budget and finance committee study that is due to come out. We understand now it will be in March. And once we see that study, we will come forth with proposed legislation to fix this problem. And we will fix the problem of, of technology constantly changing by making it technology agnostic. We don't care how you call 911. We don't care if you turn to your television and say call 911. We want the fee. But on top of that is we know now there's a better way to do this because of the technology that's occurred in the last 10 years. And we have a great opportunity with next generation 911 to not only fix 911, but to also create a situation as we prepare our Commonwealth to face anything that happens to it, natural or man made, that we have the ability to tie every one of our PSAPs and every one of our county dispatch centers together into the state's emergency operations center. And what that does is it gives us what's called situational awareness. We know of anything that's happening anywhere in the Commonwealth in any bad nature almost immediately. And it creates what we call a common operating picture so that everybody that might have to respond to that event has that information at the same time. So it doesn't delay the response. And so as an example, we are installing a common Commonwealth emergency management information system 
that it ties together our 911 centers and so forth. As bad storms come in from Ohio into western Pennsylvania, sitting in REOC, sitting at my desk, I can call up the dispatch records from those centers and I can see what they're dispatching to those storms way before it ever hits central and eastern Pennsylvania. That's, a, that's situational awareness and a common operational picture. So if we look at this holistically and break down the silos, we have a tremendous opportunity in a very short time to move us light years ahead in 911. I appreciate that, that information. And um, it's obvious that it's a, it's a big issue. And as you said, it's, it's approaching a crisis. We, I hear from the rural counties that I represent of the funding disparity in the, in the uh, wireless system. Um, and obviously, we've got some challenges there. In my area now, um, to look forward to technology, um, I have seven counties going together and building out a new enhanced system whereby seven counties are operating under one system, keeping their piece PSATs, but uh, PSAPs, but but uh, putting in one system that all all the all seven of those counties can can operate under and saving some money. So I mean that's Absolutely. one one way that things are moving forward and there are saving money and putting in new upgraded systems in place. But obviously we have some challenges ahead, and uh, I certainly look forward to working with you to address those challenges. So thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I